The animation in Disney's Wish looks cheap for a specific reason, but it's probably not the one you're expecting. When the trailer first premiered for Wish, the running joke became Disney ordered this movie on Wish, or that it was made by AI. The internet was very quick to assume that the animation was not as good as Spider-Verse or even Puss in Boots. Even streaming shows like Arcane seem to be taking more of a stylistic risk than what is seen in Wish. It's easy to get caught up in the memes and the negativity and have a good laugh at a large corporation every once in a while, but is the animation really that bad? As an animator, I feel like it's my duty to explain to you that not only is the animation in Wish not bad, it's actually very good. I'm in no way defending Disney here, in fact I offer some of my own criticisms of the film towards the end of this video, but I do want to defend the animation team itself because whether you like it or not, this movie was not made by AI. It was made by a team of mega talented artists that all worked incredibly hard. And I'll explain why we shouldn't be directing our criticism towards artists, but rather towards Disney leadership. There's a lot more going on with this animation style than you might expect, so let's start with the positives. With this movie being a celebration of the 100th anniversary of Disney, Disney animation, the producers wanted to pay homage to the many different styles of animation that Disney themselves helped pioneer. When we talk about the animation in a movie like this, what we're really referring to is the actual movement of the characters and elements themselves, not the final rendered look of the film. As far as that goes, the animation is actually quite successful. The characters are very expressive, their movements are really fluid and naturalistic, and they make some very creative directing choices. And this is to be expected from Disney animation. Some of the most talented animators in the whole world work at Disney. Personally, my favorite character animation in the whole movie movie was the star. The co-director Chris Buck, known for directing Tarzan, Frozen, and Surf's Up, pointed out that the star design and movement became a very natural homage to one of the most fundamental aspects of animation, and the thing that every beginner animator learns to animate, the bouncing ball. In fact, the character was supposed to be more complex, being a shapeshifter with dialogue, but the animation team realized that the star represents creative energy, and when the characters wish upon a star, they're tapping into their innermost desires and the purest form of self-expression. Because of this, they decided to make the character of the star have a a very simple form and have no dialogue at all. To me, throughout all of the obvious homages and references that belong more in a Marvel movie than in a Disney animation, the character of the star is the best homage that the animators can give to Walt Disney himself. Walt Disney curated a team of the most talented animators who broke new ground in discovering techniques that made their characters feel alive. Each of the 12 principles that these animators discovered can all be utilized when animating the bouncing ball. In my opinion, this is where the movie shines, not in its overt references to the seven dwarves or singing animals, but in in its love of the craft of animation. Something else to note in Wish that is done tremendously is the magic effects on Magnifico's magic abilities. The effects animators opted to go for a more traditional hand-drawn feel to the magic effects, and if I'm being honest, it's some of the best animation in the whole movie. Because Magnifico's magic effects are not simulated in the sense that they're not trying to replicate real-life physics, the effects animators are able to add an enormous amount of personality to these magic effects. There are instances where the magic elements act as hands to grab objects and characters, and it harkens back to some of Disney's best hand-drawn effects effects ever put on screen. We utilized similar techniques when I worked on the effects team for the bad guys. Also, quick note, for those of you that have been asking, I'm still working on my video about the bad guys, and it will be all about the production side of animation, so let me know in the comments what questions you have for that. But back to Wish. Magnifico himself is probably the character that stands out the most in terms of pushing human movement in a direction that does feel more stylistic. The character has a lot of depth. He sees himself as the hero and not the villain, so he's animated in kind of two different styles, moving more like a traditional Disney prince when he's seen as the good guy, and then striking into quick, aggressive poses when he's more sinister. Unfortunately, I think I know why the general outcry to this movie seems to be that it was made by AI or that it looks really cheap. While the animation itself is beautiful, the final... Rude. The final look of the film actually hurts the intended effect of this movie. Let me explain why. Because this movie is relying on audiences' prior knowledge of animation for its emotional anchor, the specific look that this movie goes for makes it feel like an animation that's intended for television. You see, TV animation is supposed to be made fast and cheap. There's nothing wrong with that, it's just a different workflow than feature animation. In CG animation, there's lots of things that the so-called Pixar look requires. One of these things is motion blur. Motion blur is what you see in a camera when an object is moving too quickly for a single frame to capture it, which creates a blur effect like this. The way that this is accomplished in 3D animation is that the computer has to generate a lot more information before it can render the frame. When it comes to making animation for television for 3D animation, this is not a luxury that's always able to be afforded by the production. Because the team on Wish was going for a storybook and watercolor feel, this meant that the motion blur had to be turned off. By paying homage to the animation style of Snow White and Pinocchio, where there's no motion blur, they unintentionally created an effect that audiences today happen to associate with animation that's cheap. The watercolor effect also makes everything feel evenly 
lit. Unlike some other animated films that have high contrast lighting like Spider-Verse or Nimona, Wish has a pretty low contrast color grade to it. I think for the look they're going for, this is exactly the right train of thought to have, but again, this technique is now used a lot in 3D animation for TV. A lot of times, animated TV shows will light the set and the characters very evenly, so they don't have to worry about changing the lighting too much for every single shot. Again, the theme here is doing it fast and cheap. So unfortunately, by committing to this watercolor aesthetic, Wish suffers from an association with low quality animation rather than itself being bad animation. I think this movie suffers from not what's in the movie itself, but rather what the audience is expected to interpret from this movie. The directors have stated that they didn't want this movie to feel like a cameo fest, where the appearance of other elements of Disney animated movies overshadows the main story. In my own opinion, I think the fact that this is written by the chief creative officer is pretty glaringly obvious. Now, Jennifer Lee was the director and writer of Frozen, which arguably has popularized this current generation of Disney princess films that was established with Tangled. It feels like Disney is trying to recapture that feeling by any means necessary. It should also be noted that this movie is in celebration of the 100th anniversary of Disney, and if you didn't know that going in, by the end of the movie you are very aware of this fact. This is a movie that was created first and foremost to celebrate the legacy of one of the most groundbreaking animation studios in the world, which means, however, the story that they're trying to tell within the structure of that movie tends to suffer a little bit from the distractions of the audience's working knowledge of who is making the movie. The biggest complaint I have about the story and the movie itself is it suffers from telling you that you should be emotionally invested in this movie rather than showing you why. The movie is telling you that because this company is celebrating its 100th anniversary, that you should be as excited about that prospect as you are about this movie. It seems to rely on Disney fans' excitement of the Disney animation franchise and legacy rather than diving into who Asha is as a character. As far as the story goes, the main character states what she wants and by the end of the movie, ends up getting what she wants. There's a reason that screenwriters will avoid giving the character exactly what they want in favor of what they actually needed all along. Because what they want comes from a surface level understanding of their world, and what they need comes from a deep emotional connection to those around the main character. For example, in the movie Shrek, Shrek's want at the beginning of the story is to be left alone. By the end of the movie, Shrek has changed as a character. He doesn't get what he originally wanted, but rather what he didn't realize that he needed all along, which was friendship, love, and acceptance. This relationship between the main character's want versus their need is called their arc. The character of Asha states what she wants and gets what she wants, and therefore has little to no character change. Oftentimes the movie stops dead in its tracks to acknowledge and celebrate Disney stereotypes like talking animals or evil wizards, and the main character takes the back seat in order to share the stage with these classic tropes, from discreet references like a poisoned apple in the villain's magical dungeon, to more glaringly obvious nods like the talking deer being named Bambi. Spoiler alert. In general, the animation in Wish is really fantastic, but I think it suffers from the very thing that it tried to do first and foremost, which was to use the audience's working knowledge of animation to generate an emotional response. By trying to combine Tangled with Fantasia, it indicated to the audiences that the film wants you to view this movie through the lens of every other movie that has come before it. And unfortunately for Disney, you have to understand that animation has evolved beyond Disney to include things like cheap TV animation. Again, there's nothing wrong with this, it's just the reality of the world we live in now. As I mentioned, however, this movie was created specifically to celebrate the centennial of Disney animation. The director stated that the whole reason this movie came to fruition is because Disney executives realized that the 100th anniversary was coming up, and they wanted to make a film that would celebrate that. So as a 90-minute curtain call for all of Disney animation films, this movie succeeds. But for the story that bounces between those references and nods, there's unfortunately a lot to be desired. I really wanted to make this video to address head-on the critique that Disney is making bad animation, because it's very clear that their crew put their heart and soul into creating the best movie possible. However, it's clear that Disney executives were more concerned about turning this animation into its Avengers, rather than a solid fairy tale that will be remembered far past the centennial. Okay, there's been enough criticism about this movie, let's try to end on a positive note. Let's think about what this represents for animation as a medium, because for all intents and purposes, at the end of the day, Wish is an original movie. You know, the thing that audiences have been claiming that they want all along? It's not a reboot. It's not a remake, and it's not a sequel, despite having cameos from almost every Disney animated movie. And what's more, they took an additional risk by creating a painterly treatment for this movie. Now, sometimes these risks don't pay off, but to be honest, I would rather see movies take an artistic risk than churning out yet another tentpole movie in the same style year after year. But the fact that the biggest animation studio in the world is finally taking notice of artistic styles beyond photorealism means that we've entered a new era of animation. What started for Disney with its original shorts paper 
Superman and Feast, which by the way are amazing and way ahead of their time, has now become a full-blown feature animated film with an artistic style taking priority over photorealism. Of course, they're not the first to do this, but I feel like we as fans of animation should celebrate what Wish represents, which is that our love and our passion for animation, whether it's anime, experimental, or just Spider-Verse, has built up enough momentum that the largest animation studio on the planet finally acknowledge that maybe these other forms of animation are valid. For the past 100 years, Disney made its audiences fall in love with the art form of animation and inspired filmmakers and animators across the world. Now, it feels like the tables have turned and those same filmmakers and animators are the ones inspiring Disney to raise the bar for animation. My wish for all of you is to walk away from this movie feeling confident that Disney is no longer the only company that can create incredible animation. There are so many other studios popping up creating beautiful pieces of art and I truly believe that 3D animation and just animation in general is on the precipice of a major revolution. We should give Disney its flowers for revolutionizing animation over the past 100 years and we should also be excited about the next Disney to rock animation for the next 100 years. Hopefully new and exciting mediums like virtual reality can foster a new generation of animation. In fact, I started my own independent animation studio specifically for virtual reality because I believe that VR has the potential to be the next frontier for storytelling and animation. My first animated VR film will be titled New Venice and I'm actually documenting the making of it here on this channel. So if you're interested and you wanna support me in this project, you can learn more about it on my page. And if you agree with anything I've said in this video, I would also appreciate you tapping the like button. Thanks for watching.